guys were in Lourdes this morning. We started at Montserrat and we left there along one of the Marian pilgrimage routes and we arrived in Andorra, which is along the route. The story there is very similar to Montserrat's story. So some shepherds found Mary in a cave in the winter time. There's a bunch of snow and then a rose bush and they found her in the rose bush. There should have been no reason for roses to be there at that time. So they took the statue back to the village. The next day when they woke up, they didn't find the statue and they went back to the place and they found her again in the same spot. They took her back down, couldn't find her again. They found her again in the same spot. They assumed that she wanted them to build a shrine there. So they built a shrine there to her. Unfortunately, we don't have the original statue. It burned in a fire, so they had to make replicas. But we got to see the replica. We prayed the divine mercy in front of our lady of Marichelle. It was a nice place to stop along because we have a long bus ride. And then we made our way to Lourdes. A recap on the story for Lourdes. One day, while Bernadette and her cousin and one of her friends were gathering sticks, she was very sickly. She saw Our Lady right here behind me. Nobody believed her, not a lot of people. There were some people that believed her, but it was kind of divided on who believed her, who did not believe her. And she kind of had a rough life the whole time. No one believed her, no one thought she was good enough. And even after she left, when she went to the convent, people didn't think she was good enough. Even the sisters, they would mock her and make fun of her. Even after her death, actually, a lot of them still didn't want her to be beatified, called her a normal nun, things like that. But she ended up dying of tuberculosis and is one of the greatest saints. She's actually incorruptible in a town in Navarre. So we'll just pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then, dear Mother, we ask to grow closer to you in uh, this time in Lourdes, where you appeared to Bernadette, and um, help us to grow closer to you and to your Son, and to um, pray for all those things we need, um, and all those people we've asked to pray for. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Bernadette, pray for us. This is day number one. Oh, we're looking forward to being here for the next few days and praying for you and for your intentions and just growing closer and learning more about Our Lady. Have a good night, y'all. Bonne nuit. My name is Paul Keenan from the Diocese of Lansing. I just wanted to share a reflection I had over the last two days. Today, as you can see, we're in Lourdes. But yesterday, on our way here from Montserrat, we passed through beautiful, beautiful landscapes, mostly mountainous. And as we drove through there, I was reflecting on a line from yesterday's gospel in which Jesus said about his disciples, I wish that they might be where I am, that they may be with me and see my glory. And I just felt that yesterday, the Lord, through the glory of his creation, was showing us something of his own glory. But what's impacted me is that that experience of his glory and nature was part of our path leading us here to Lourdes. And this is a beautiful place as well in terms of the nature, but here his glory is even richer, even more beautiful because of the spiritual significance of this place. Here it was that Mary revealed her name as the Immaculate Conception, God's greatest work of creation, conceiving Mary immaculately, unstained from any touch of sin, to be his mother and to be our mother. Here we experience the Lord's glory at this great shrine where we meet his mother and in her we meet him. So while on this pilgrimage we haven't been walking in the Lord's footsteps in the Holy Land, we have in a very real way been encountering him in the glory of his creation and especially in his glory manifest in the works of his church and the church's response to his great works such as at this apparition site where so many pilgrims, millions each year come to encounter our mother and through her to come to know our risen Lord in his glory and beauty more fully. Hey guys, we're here in Lourdes, and as you can see right behind me is the Basilica. Right behind the Basilica, that is the Grotto, where Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette. There were a total of 18 apparitions that Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about the third apparition, which is the first time Our Lady spoke to St. Bernadette. And when Our Lady addressed St. Bernadette, she asked her, will you do me the favor of coming 15 more times to this grotto for me? And that was the first time that St. Bernadette was ever addressed in the formal you that way. She was addressed with the formal you very personally and intentionally. Our Lady was trying to show St. Bernadette how much she was loved, how much dignity and respect she deserved. And through that, we can even hear Our Lady speaking those words to us because Our Lady wants each and every one of us to know how much we are loved, how much respect and dignity we deserve. Our Lady is pointing to us the love that Jesus has for us, the dignity and respect that he sees each and every one of us personally with. 
Hey guys, Michael Hess with you today. We are here in our last day in Lourdes. The past few days have been a much slower pace, christened by mass and two holy hours a day. Though this place is nearly always bustling with pilgrims, there are still ample locations to find time of quiet and stillness with our Lord. Characteristic of Lourdes is a call of penance by way of procession. The Virgin invites all of us to the Blessed Grotto in her divine Son's name for the conversion of our hearts and in the hope of forgiveness. In the eighth apparition of Our Lady, she confides her message of penance to St. Bernadette. She says, penance, penance, penance. Pray to God for the conversion of sinners. Go and kiss the ground as a penance for sinners. Mary asks us to do the things we wish not to do out of true love for those we wish to bring back to the Lord's goodness. The Blessed Virgin in the ninth apparition then says, go and drink at the spring and wash yourself. We are called to purity. The drinking of this water brings to mind John chapter 4 verse 14 where Jesus says, but whoever drinks of the water the water that I will give him shall never thirst, but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Lourdes water is certainly special and has significance to all the pilgrims who come here seeking the Lord's love and mercy. It manifests to us the tangible gift of Christ's eternal word, which purifies us and makes us clean. Our Lady entrusts Bernadette with a very specific message in her 13th apparition. She says, go and tell the priests that the people should come here in procession and that a chapel should be built here. Procession includes all of us together, a demonstration of the church's universality. It manifests the spiritual reality of Christ's body in a physical form. Human strength is temporary and on loan to us. We are called to walk with one another and help each other. The aged and sick are accompanied by the young and strong. Regardless of our physical condition, our faith in God is our sure strength that we can rely on. We are called to be in communion with one another in faith so that each of us may receive and share what the Lord wishes to give. We see manifest the light of hope in the millions of pilgrims who make this journey annually to Our Lady of Lourdes. Each of us makes up the streaming river of faith that flows toward the heavenly kingdom of God. None of us can do it on our own. We need God's love made manifest to us by others in the faith we share. The other day, the Bishop of Ferns, Ireland, shared with us a beautiful poem by John O'Donohue. It says, When you travel, a new silence goes with you, and if you listen, you will hear what your heart would love to say. May you travel in an awakened way, gathered wisely into your inner ground, that you may not waste the invitations which wait along the way to transform you. May you travel safely, arrive refreshed, and live your time away to its fullest. Return home more enriched and free to balance the gift of days which call you. We now conclude our time here in Lourdes with a final prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, help us to love the way that you love, so that by loving others, we may love them into loving you. Lord, you are love itself, and we come from love. Help us to return to you, the divine trinity, by way of love. May Our Lady of Lourdes be an inspiration for us to return to you by penance and procession in our lives. We ask St. Bernadette to intercede for us, to strengthen us in humility and peace. And may we always be refreshed by that living stream of love, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.